Hello friends, so today we are going to repair one motherboard. This one is that motherboard. Uh, this motherboard is not powering on, it's powering on but it's not fully powering on. We are going to repair this uh, and uh, we are taking help of this book. Okay, we go, there are steps are given in this books. How to repair it, what are the steps, which signal we have to test, where the voltage has test, everything is given in this book. So, we help we take help of this books and uh, we do the practical so let's start so we are going to connect this motherboard to the power supply the supply is already set and we'll see how much the current is coming now we are going to connect power supply to the motherboard and we can see here on the DC power supply the current is showing a 2 milli ampere okay in any motherboard if our uh, A section that means our battery charging section is working and if the 3 volt is coming then in power supply the current should be approximately from 2 milli ampere to 20 milli amperes and now we can see here in our DC power supply we can see the current is showing a 2 milli ampere okay and the motherboard we are not yet power on so we are going to turn on this motherboard okay you press the power supply and you can see the current is showing somewhere around 128 127 121 current is dropped its current goes maximum to the 130 milliampere and is dropped down again back to 12 milliampere that means here in this motherboard we can say that when we press the power button then the slp3 slp4 is working the fan is spinning then 3 volt and 5 volt is working then the ram voltage is probably also will come but the cpu core is not coming the cpu core is not coming we'll see in this book see in this chart this is a chart on the dc power supply uh, this our motherboard is a third generation motherboard when we press the power button at that time if the cpu core voltage and bias start operating then the current should go above 550 to 650 and for the display the current should go above 650 milliampere but in our motherboard the current is going maximum 130 milliampere you can see in the dcb power supply the current is going maximum 130 milliampere is dropped down that means cpu core is not coming if the cpu core is not coming then we have to focus on the vrm section okay so first we'll see in the book where is this vrm section and how it's work we'll open this vrm section this is a vrm section cpu core section this section is a cpu core section and uh, for up to third generation and the concept is given here and the flowchart is given here if the cpu core is not coming then what things we have to check that is given here in this book so this is a cpu vrm chips so here we have to check uh, vr on signal then we have to check the vcc that is the power to the vrm chips then we have to check vr hot signal so these three signal we have to check first okay now what we do is we'll open a schematic diagram there and uh, we'll go to the vrm sections on the schematic diagram and we'll check the pinout for this uh, vr on signal and then supply pin that is a vcc or vdd pin and the vr hot signal okay so here in this diagram so firstly i'm going to check uh, power to this uh, vrm chip so this one is a vrm chip okay and uh, this section is called the cpu core section give the power to the cpu the voltage is somewhere around approximately one volt cpu core voltage considered in the current that is in ampere voltage approximately 1 to 1.8 volt so here the supply should come but uh, the output voltage is not coming the cpu core voltage is not coming so what we are going to do is we are going to check uh, this vrm chips so for that we need a data of the inputs and output pins so here in this uh, diagram we open a 
schematic diagram for the motherboard and the chip number is NCP6132 okay NCP6132 is a chip number is a supply pin is that is called the PVCC pin number 36 there we are going to check a 5 volt so pin number 4 is the enable pin pin number 1 is again the supply pin that is a VCC so first we are going to check pin number 1 and another pin number 36 both pins should give the 5 volt okay so let's start so we are going to check power to the chips that is pin number 1 and pin number 36 it should come 5 volt as soon as I press the power button on the multimeter it should show the 5 volt so you can see here on the multimeter it's coming a 5 volt that means power to the VRM chip is perfect is all right okay so we can check both the pin pin number 1 and pin number 36 so we'll check supply pin on the VRM chip it should show a 5 volt the 5 volt is coming okay so the next uh, signal is enable signal so the enable pin is pin number 4 that is called a VR on signal the VR on signal actually is coming from SIO okay so we are going to check the VR on signal at pin number 4 so on the off condition the VR on signal is 0 volt and when we press the power button it will go high. See when we press the power button the VR on signal has become a 3 volt. When you press the power button the VR on signal will become 3 volt. So the other signal also is coming. Now we are going to check another signal that is the VR hot. is a uh, indicate that VRM section temperature actually it's a measure the temperature from the VRM circuits that means the CPU side section if the CPU is very hot if the temperature is excess then the VR hot signal become a zero volt okay so if the core if the VRM area temperature is a normal then the VR hot signal will be 1 volt. So when we press the power button, the VR hot signal should be 1 volt. Yeah, the VR hot signal is 1 volt. So that signal is a perfect. So friend, in this, so according to this books, we check all the VRM sections, we check VR on signal, we check VR hot signal, we check VCC supply and uh, still the CPU core voltage is not coming, then there's probably the VRM chip may be the faulty. What we do is uh, we put uh, another VRM chip and we'll recheck the motherboard. But before that, one more test uh, we have to do that is important that is uh, short circuit whether there is any short circuit on this uh, core side or not so that we can do by using a multimeter on the buzzer so we we'll put it up we keep the multimeter on the buzzer mode and uh, we check the resistance it should not show a zero ohms resistance so let's start so uh, one probe connected to the ground another probe connected to the the VRM coil and uh, I put it multimeter on the buzzer and showing somewhere around 4 ohms 5 ohms it's not showing a zero okay so that means there is no short circuit on the VRM that means the CPU is not short okay then in this case there may be only two possibilities either the VRM chip is faulty or the MOSFETs are faulty so what we are going to do is we are to we are going to replace the VRM chips and we'll see what's happened.
the chip is fixed in this motherboard and uh, now we'll see we are going to check this motherboard again so let's start so the chip we already fixed and uh, now we are going to turn on the motherboard again so let's start current is coming and when we press the power button the current is shoot up somewhere around 700 that means the cpu core also coming we are going to we'll check the cpu core voltage <coughs> one two see the cpu core voltage is coming somewhere around 0.8 Okay. and the current also shoot up on the DC power supply the current also shoot up so our motherboard is power on so friend in this way I will explain you how to repair a VRM section and uh, we see in this motherboard the CPU core voltage was not coming what are the test point we check all the test points and in this motherboard we have concluded that the VRM chip is faulty. We took the help of this book, we diagnosed the problem. So you can also get this book. This book is very useful to all engineers who are in this field, in the repair field, uh, laptops and desktop, everything is given in this book. Different, different problems, their solutions and flowchart is given in this book. So if you want this book, you can contact below numbers and available this book. So thank you very much.